President Bola Tinobu today announced that the Nigerian, uh, the federal government is set to launch the Nigerian Education Loan Fund aimed at providing financial assistance to students pursuing higher education. The president emphasized that this initiative will commence soon, reflecting the government's commitment to enhancing access to quality education across the nation. So uh, tonight we'll be looking at access to higher education as it affects Nigeria's uh, human capital development. Don't forget that, that Access to Higher Education Act 2023 was signed into law by the president. But let me allow you to listen to what the president said about the student loan earlier today in MENA. Take a listen to President Jimmy. Persevere. And consistency can make a nation buoyant. The student loan program will commence. commence. There will be unemployment benefit for our graduates. The social security program for the elderly and vulnerable will commence. We are fine-tuning all of that area. I'm going to relieve people of hunger. So last month, the president inaugurated uh, the special committee to oversee the Nigerian Education Loan Fund. And of course, the president set up uh, that uh, structure of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund to be headed by the Executive Secretary, Akin Today Sawyer. Ms. Akin Today Sawyer is our guest tonight on the program. He joins us live here in Abuja City. Thanks so much, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you very much indeed for having me here. I appreciate it. Thank you. This is novel. This is new to the Nigerian education landscape. Uh, we've heard it happen elsewhere around the globe, but this is the first time that Nigeria will be experiencing it. I need this, uh, the Establishment Act is the Access to Higher Education Act, which your, uh, your office will be acting on, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. First of all, let me say what a laudable act it is. It's new, it's novel, but more important than that, it's very, very needed. There are many, many students, many, many intended students in this country who want to go on to higher education, who have the capacity, the capability, the desire to do so, but they're limited because of the funding that they don't have. And how much is the funding compared to many other countries? It's not very much. It's a bridge that should be closed so that they can jump across it and actually begin to enjoy the potential benefits of working to their own capacity and improving their own individual lives, but more equally as, as, as important, to improving the socioeconomic status of this country, mm. this great, potentially great nation, Nigeria. But this is uh, a bit, uh, is, is, is slightly different from what we see in the UK, for example, or in some part of the US. This is specifically for indigent and low income uh, beneficiaries. Sure, and, and I think that speaks to the fact that, you know, that's where the biggest problem is. You know, Nigeria is segmented into Different strata, some people are, can afford to go and study abroad, some people can afford to go to private universities or private uh, uh, tertiary institutions of other kinds. But in this country, we have many, many, many youth who are unable to achieve this, as I said, because of the gap, the financing gap. I think we have more than most countries in that regard, and we haven't addressed it for such a long time. It's about time that we start addressing it. And the president has signed into law this act which allows us to give this opportunity to our people, to our young people. These are people who are going to be our future leaders. These are people who are going to be competing globally with other nations to bring things back to this nation and make this nation great. So it's a really important act mm. and a really important initiative. I can't overstate that. Mm. June last year, the president signed that bill into law. Um, February this year, he started putting the team together. Uh, inauguration uh, happened, and it, it, today he's saying that uh, it will take up, but we do not know uh, when it, that, uh, that takeoff will be. But give us an understanding, because what we also hear is that that law seems not to represent exactly what the president intended, and there are possibilities 
of tweaking things uh, because some lawmakers that we have talk, uh, spoken to, and in fact, uh, the, and the time that the president spoke about it, when Mr. Dele Alaki at the time announced this initiative uh, after the president signed into law, um, we engage, uh, as to we engage some lawmakers who say, yes, a good initiative, but it, it has to be tweaked one way or the other. Is the government thinking about th that kind of thing? Yeah, of course. I think what we need to recognize is that this law was actually passed through the House or through the National Assembly in the previous administration, during the previous administration. The motiv motivations for this might have been slightly different. The landscape at the time was certainly very different. What we have now is that the president, when he came into office on the 12th of June, signed this into law. And the reality of it is that we've had to take stock and look at where we are, look at the position we're in, and say, OK, what do we do with this? It's not perfect. It's not a perfect law. However, do we throw away the baby with the bathwater, or do we start to activate this going forward? And by the way, in 10 years' time, when the landscape changes again, however perfect it might look when it's amended, it'll have to be tweaked again, because the idea is to continuously improve the situation in terms of education in this country. Mm. And as that position improves, we'll have to either change guidelines or change the law to reflect that. The president was uh, the, a few people who took him up on this idea because it was a major campaign idea that the president took to the podium and he campaigned with it. And uh, a lot of people were not surprised by it. By June, it was already uh, moving, uh, was, I mean, it was moving towards actualizing that campaign promise. Let's show our viewers what this law, uh, when it was signed into law, this was a summary we, uh, we gave uh, to you, what this law meant. It, wa it was meant to dismantle the financial barriers often hindering talented individuals from pursuing higher education by offering interest-free loans. They're supposed to be interest-free. Uh, it's supposed to, uh, the, is a, as an education loan fund, which is established by the education uh, loan fund uh, law. And they, uh, at the core of the student loan bill lies the establishment of the Nigerian Education Bank. And repayment, they say no cap on the amount students can access. The repayment of the loan begins exactly two years after the completion of the participation in the NYC program. That was what I was able to glean. That was what I learned from reading through the, um, the draft of the, of the bill. Is, does this represent what you're going to be working with? OK, thank you very much. Again, a great question. But let me reiterate, one of the guiding principles and one of the things that I believe Mr. President wanted to do with this was to make this a, an opportunity to bridge the financing gap for education as, um, as easy as possible. So this isn't intended to be onerous on the, those who are applying for these loans. That's one of the key reasons why it's an interest-free loan. Because of course, as soon as you start to put interest on an education loan like this, the interest starts to mount and people become, become less focused on the education that they're trying to get. What this act, what this law is trying to do is to say, look, try and focus now that we've bridged the gap for you as a, as a government, try and focus on your studies so you're not worrying about you know, how much the interest is going up by. We're trying to make it easy for people to make the decision as to whether or not they want to take the loan. Let me speak to the point about the um, two years after uh, uh, National Youth Service Corps. Very, very straightforward. What this loan says is, look, after two years after National Youth Service Corps is the time you're absolutely obliged to start looking at how you pay the loan back. It, it doesn't state that you must pay the loan back two years after the NYSC. What it does say is that if you have a job, if you are earning, then you can start to pay the loan back. If you lose that job or you're not earning, you don't start paying back until you get a job. So again, it's trying to take away that burden. You know, loans have become a very dirty word, not just in this country, but in many parts of the world, where you take a loan, you don't pay back, somebody comes after you, you know, it, this is not designed to be this way. This loan is supposed to help you focus, help you have a, a peace of mind, if you like, as you go through your educational process. And we've tried to make this as easy as possible. The other thing to bear in mind is that you don't want to criminalize somebody who is actually trying to improve themselves. You know, we all have an obligation to be the best that we can be in anything that we do. If you start to put barriers in people's way, 
you know, by giving the impression, for example, that you're going to come after them if they don't pay, or they're going to have to pay whether they have a job or not. You know, these, are, these things are going to make it more difficult, mm -hmm. as will interest rates. So, so it's about, I mean, yeah. there are a lot of people who, who are a, a few things which I'd like you to clarify. Uh, so quick questions. Uh, what is the benchmark? What is the mark? How much, uh, what is the maximum any student can get? Okay, so at the moment, um, we're looking purely at state-owned tertiary institutions. That's university. Un uh, university owned by the federal government alone. Well, we're going to roll this out in phases, but at the moment we're looking at state-owned, so federal government, state governments, and then perhaps latterly, I know the president has expressed the view that actually every Nigerian should be entitled to get a loan to study wherever they want to study in this country. This act will make provision for that, but we're going to roll it out in phases so that we can learn as we go along and we can actually get to the people who need it most in the early phases. So you're right. We'll start with the federal universities. You asked about the benchmark. So today, there is an average cost for a session at an institution. In certain places, it's 100,000. Other places, it's 150, 200,000. Really depends on the course that you're studying. If you're studying medicine, it's one rate. If, it's, if you're studying social anthropology, it's another rate. Some of these courses are five years, some are three years. So, you know, it, it varies. But the intention is to give applicants who are successful whose loan applications get approved, the opportunity to be funded through these loans all the way through their education. So there's journey. no collateral? There's no collateral. There's there are obviously some uh, eligibility criteria, which is clearly well spelled mm -hmm. out in the law. So that's another problem. The criteria is uh, bring uh, a civil servant who is so-so, bring a judge that is this, bring the, 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 the requirement uh, looks like encumbrance that makes it more difficult if you are asking that indigent student should be able to have access and you are asking them to bring all of these instruments uh, for them to be able to get a facility, that those will think that that is not genuine enough. Okay, so again, let's go back to the fact that this is a loan. It's not a grant, it's a loan. And you know, in as much as it's an interest-free loan and we're making it easy for people to access this loan, we still also have to remember that these are public funds. These funds belong to you and I and other people, and we have to disperse these funds responsibly. We have to ensure that those who we're giving the funds to, one, are using it for the right thing, and those are catered for by you know, direct disbursements to tertiary institutions. But we also need to know that the people that are applying for these loans and are getting these loans actually are able to qualify for them by showing not so much collateral, but that they are bona fide members of society, people who are well-intentioned, and therefore there are certain yeah, criteria. So, so yeah, the criteria have been criticized, and perhaps in tweaking the law, maybe the federal government will also be thinking, I mean, if people have all of these people around them, they wouldn't need these loans. So if you're asking them to bring an, a leg and an arm, to, uh, to salvage a broken leg, why do they need a loan if there is a proper leg in the, in the first place? Sure. So the question is, are you thinking, uh, if you want to make the lives of an, uh, the average Nigerian better or the indigent student better, are you trying as much as possible to make it easier for them? Okay, so remember at the beginning of our conversation, I said that you know, this law is not perfect. Um, it, to a large degree, we're going to need to see how it plays out, okay? But it's better than nothing. At the moment, we have a law introduced by in, during the, the, the previous administration's tenure. Today, we've inherited something that we think is a good start. It's workable. As soon as we start to operate this, we are going to look at where we need to tweak it, what the uptake is. Mm -hmm. I can tell you today that you know, there are 1.2 million people in tertiary institutions, publicly owned tertiary institutions in Nigeria today. When applications come in, we could get 5 million applications. We simply don't know. There's pent up demand for, uh, for education in this country. And when that comes through, we're going to have to sift through it and ensure yeah. that you know, we make it easy for those who really need it yeah. and maybe not so easy for those who don't. There are all those side, uh, you, you talked about the benchmark because there are those who will say, uh, don't make it about the money or make it about the cost because if the federal government or the government owns this institution and uh, the whole idea is to allow students to be able to go to school. And those in my father's uh, time, 
uh, wound away in the university, some of uh, 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 the subsidies they, they got in going to school included uh, lunch, included breakfast, included dinner. Uh, I remember that my uncle would t tell me that uh, his cousins, we come visit him in the hostel and they have half a chicken for a lunch and they could all share. Um, and those who were saying, look, uh, these days there will be departmental fees, faculty fees, university fees, these fees and these other fees, apart from the tuition and all the hostel fees and all other view. Uh, they are thinking that the loan should cover all the gamut of what we allow the student to be able to see himself or herself through the first year to the end of his education. Is that how it will play out? Absolutely. The whole idea of this is to give students who are successful at applying for the loan unfettered access to classes. In other words, there should be no hidden fees, there should be no extra fees. Once they apply for the loan, this fund will cover the entire gamut of institutional fees for that particular student. Okay, so the, the funds will be dispersed directly to the institution and the agreement with the institution is that the student is allowed unfettered access to classes, to lectures, to tutorials, and to, um, you know, to examination rooms. The idea is to take all of these things off the table and allow the student yeah, unfettered so, access. Uh, if, if the plan of uh, uh, the federal government, for example, is what it's called, the law itself is called Access, access to Higher Education Act, which means that it is not about only going to school, it is uh, basically uh, for you to have access to education. And access, you cannot go to school with empty stomach. So, uh, and that's what I'm asking. Will it include everything that will be needed for you to go to school, including maybe some uh, meals? Okay, so again, you know, we have to act within the law. The law we have today only allows us to cover institutional fees. We already established in our conversation uh, so far that there are other areas that we perhaps need to look at, other areas we need to tweak, so that it's reflective of the realities. Mm. The truth about it is you're absolutely right. If you cover institutional fees for some people, if they don't have funds to do photocopying, to feed themselves, to buy data, to pay for telephone access, there are a whole gamut of other fees that, or other that costs. costs to the land. Yeah. So, so what we're doing here, it's an intuitive process. What we're doing here is say, look, let's start with what we've got. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. Let's not try and start you know, putting another bill through, uh, through the, the, mm. the, you know, the National Assembly. Mr. Sawyer, let yeah. me ask you a difficult question. Yeah. Have you ever experienced any scholarship? Me personally? Yeah. Uh, I have indeed, yes. Yeah. I, had, I had a student grant. A, for, I, a, foreign, a, a foreign student grant. A, a foreign grant. scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, some of these scholarships will entail your, your flight ticket. I've never had one of those. <laughs> yes, I, I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, that some of those we will entail you getting the flight ticket from, from your, uh, where you're coming from to your desk and when you're returning to your home country. Some of these scholarships are... As, 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 uh, as, as inclusive as much, and uh, um, perhaps throwing these, maybe when you're tweaking it, you might be able to, because people were indigent. I was not, I didn't come from a background that was so, so nice that I could pay for everything. So I experienced what it means to, uh, to come from a difficult background. So I can tell you uh, what it means that if a student wants to get access, the access has to be all-inclusive. Um, and this brings me to the question of the repayment plan. It's a two years after NYSC. A lot of people are still there. Six years, five years after NYSC, no jobs. That is a pro pro problem. So their case will not be the, like uh, some, um, some loan companies who chase after you when you are not able to pay. <laughs> sure. Look, the, the point you make is well taken. You know, unemployment, I think it's 35% youth unemployment in this country today. There are other initiatives of government that are seeking to address this. You know, the truth about it is that we are giving loans to successful applicants. We need those loans to be paid back. Why? One of the primary reasons we need those loans to be paid back is that there are people in the queue. 
There are other people wanting to come into the scheme and get loans. In terms of repayment, as I said earlier, it's two years after youth service. If, and I reiterate, if they have a job. This doesn't mean that people can't pay back early. There are some who get very lucky. They end up with oil companies and banks, and they're able to do that. Or they have an uncle somewhere who says, I'm going to liquidate your loan for you. Mm. Look, um, but you're right. The people who need it the most need a higher education. Why do they need higher education? Because they need jobs. There's a percentage of these people who are going to get jobs just by the sheer fact that they've got a better education than the one that they had mm. before. There are clearly going to be some who are, not going to, who are going to struggle to get jobs. Mm. You know, we're going to have to address this incrementally. Yeah. These are issues. These are national issues. And I think what the president has done here is he's kicked the ball forward, and we've just got to support it. Yeah. We're ready to launch this right now. Everything is in place for us. So to your launch. office is ready? Our office is ready. We're ready to launch. You have the website, the portal? We have the portal. Once the president signs off, and gives us it, we're going to launch this, this program. Students are writing exams in some federal universities, so hopefully by, the, uh, by when the, the next session will start, they might be able to get access to it. Is that possible? I think the president's intention was for us to get here a lot faster. You know, we, we, you know he, he, wants, he really wants to get this going, and we're yeah. going to do everything to support that process. And I, as the executive secretary of NEL Fund, will tell you today that we are ready to, to start this program, we're getting help and support. And because it's a process, mm -hmm. and it's one that you have to hold hands with other agencies, we're getting help. We're getting support from agencies like NIMSI because it's, uh, you know, but, it's, but it's The law NIMSI. talks about the education bank. Is yeah. that going to start in, immediately? No, that, that, that this, can this, start this, 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 this is a loan fund. This, so, this, but, this fund is entirely independent. So you start ad hoc yeah, until you go into full blown. We're, we're going to start with the fund, and we're going to effectively allow people to ac access this fund through a portal, through a portal that has no human intervention, yeah. so there's no opportunity for anyone no to... No political... Uh, no political influence, no votes for loans, no, no votes for other things, no demigods. We want to take all of this out of the system because these are the most vulnerable people. So I, I, is society. it possible also that it's going to be merit? If you are able to pass well your jam, your entrance examination, you might easily be able to apply for this because proving that you are indigent, that's another thing. Yeah. So we haven't linked this to performance, okay? We've linked it to a couple of things. First of all, you have to want to take the loan. Secondly, you have to be a Nigerian, and the NIN confirms that. You have to be financially included. The BVN confirms that, and we can also use it to, be, to recover the right. funds we need. And the JAM number obviously confirms that you're a, you're a student or an intended student. But we're ready to launch, and we've designed a fantastic uh, portal for us to be able to do that. Yeah. Mr. Akinsede Sawyer, as long as you, as soon as you, uh, you launch this and you get off the ground and off to scratch, please do let us in uh, into your programs and let Nigeria, let Nigerians also be able to get a benefit of this, which looks like a good idea if we were implemented. It yes, will that's, be, that's it, the problem. It will be well implemented. It's well intended. Yeah. The president has done the right thing. It will be well implemented. Mm. It's currently with the, with the CBN again. So we want absolute transparency right. around how this, all this works. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll be happy to come back and give Nigerians an update on this uh, as soon as you want us back. You know, this is thank a great you. initiative, yeah. and we are, it belongs to Nigerians, and it will always belong to Nigerians. Mr. Thank Sawyer, you. thank you so much indeed. Thank you, Shira. Appreciate it.